So my name is Alexander Stessen. I'm a radiation oncologist uh, here at Stony Brook. And my talk today is titled Radiotherapy for Breast Cancer, One Size Doesn't Fit All. So radiation therapy is part of the multimodality treatment for breast cancer. And it's used in a couple of different contexts. Uh, it can be a part of uh, breast conservation therapy where it follows a lumpectomy um, and it obviates the need for a mastectomy and so it allows us to preserve the shape and the texture of the breast without compromising cure. Um, in other cases where a mastectomy is needed, uh, radiation therapy can be added afterwards to reduce the risk of the breast cancer coming back either in the chest wall or in the lymph nodes in the axilla and so forth. And thereby improving survival. The breast surgery is the mainstay treatment for uh, localized breast cancer and what it does is basically it removes the primary disease in the breast and provides us with staging information. And then radiation therapy follows to eradicate any uh, microscopic disease that may be left behind. And what we know from multiple uh, stage 3 randomized clinical trials for, of thousands of women is that post-operative radiation therapy decreases the chances of the, the breast cancer coming back locally or local regionally by more than 50%. So when we are planning our treatment with radiation, we have several goals in mind. So first, obviously, we want to deliver uh, a sufficient dose of radiation to kill off any cancer cells that may be left behind after surgery. Uh, but also, we want to make sure that we get uh, adequate cosmetic outcomes and that we provide the treatment in a manner that's convenient for the patient and family. And uh, most importantly, that we minimize the damage that radiation can do to the surrounding normal tissues. So radiation's been around uh, for a little more than 100 years since it was discovered by Rengen, and it's been used therapeutically for this whole time. But obviously, we've come quite a long way from those days of early uh, therapeutic radiology. And uh, the modern radiotherapy uh, treatment starts with a planning scan, otherwise known as CT simulation. And this is a scan that's done in the same position as the patient will be during treatment. And then based on that scan, we uh, make all our treatment planning determinations. And so, so we start by outlining the target volume, which is usually the breast and sometimes a little bit of extra doses given at the end to the lumpectomy cavity that you see here in the middle. Um, and then we also outline the organs that we want to avoid or minimize. And ultimately, we come up with uh, a, essentially a radiation dose map, right? And so what you can see here in red is what's getting the full dose, and that's the breast. That's our target. And under it are the lungs and the heart, which are just getting skimmed. So while we can't avoid them completely, we can minimize the dose that they're getting. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been said that radiation therapy is the epitome of personalized medicine because everyone's anatomy is different. And so every treatment plan um, that you saw on the previous slide will be different. But with that said, for decades, uh, breast radiotherapy was very standardized. Okay, so everybody would get basically the same number of treatments, same total dose, um, and same general approach, all patients with breast cancer. Um, and uh, this was going on for a long time, but... I would say that over the past 10 or 15 years, that's changed a lot. And so now it's no longer a cookie cutter approach and we have many different options. We have different techniques to uh, spare the uh, normal tissues or the good tissues, right? Uh, which we'll talk about in the next few slides. One is called intensity modulated radiation therapy or IMRT. And then we have a uh, prone or uh, belly technique and we also have respiratory gating and I'll explain what all that means. Basically, when we talk about side effects of radiation therapy, um, it helps to divide them into the acute and the long term. The acute are uh, side effects that are likely to happen during the course of the radiation or immediately after, uh, but usually go away. So they're self-limited. Uh, we don't have to worry about them uh, in the long term. The late toxicities are much harder to deal with if they do happen, but thankfully, with the right treatment planning, and everything that modern technology affords us, the incidence of these late uh, uh, side effects is, is becoming less and less. And so uh, in most cases, we don't have to worry about them. But we always have to bear them in mind when we are planning the treatment. So what are some of these new technological tools that 
allow us to spare the normal tissues? Well, one is, uh, as I mentioned, int called uh, intensity modulated radiation therapy. There's also the 3D conformal radiation therapy. And basically, um, both of these are designed to make the uh, treatment field a lot more conformal to the target, what we're treating. So what you see here um, is that at the head of the radiation gantry, where the radiation beam comes out from, we have um, a bunch of these tungsten leaves that can move in and out of the field during the course of the treatment. And so uh, it allows us to sh really shape the beam. And this is what's meant by the intensity modulated radiation. And what you end up with in terms of the radiation dose map is something like this, right? So here we have a a uh, convex target, the uh, chest wall, that has to be covered very precisely and very conformally. And you can see that here we're essentially away from the heart and lung, even though they're nearby. So another uh, way to reduce the dose to the surrounding normal tissues is to put the patient in the prone position or on her belly. And the breast will fall into this cutout that you see in the image here. And the dose will be driven away from the heart and the lung. So if you look at the radiation dose maps here on the left, uh, this is the patient lying on her back, and on the right it's um, on her belly. And so here, as you can see, the uh, beam doesn't really traverse the lung and the heart as much as, as it does uh, when she's lying on her back. Um, another thing we can do is to treat the patient uh, with a breath hold. So when we inhale, our um, thorax expands and, and the heart gets pushed away from uh, where we're treating. And the proportion of the lung that's now tra traversed by the beam is also a lot less uh, that in, than it would be during uh, free breathing. And so what happens is the patient will inhale, um, hold her breath. The, uh, there's a sensor that tells the machine when the patient is now exhaling and the beam will shut off and wait for the patient to inhale again. So it makes the treatment a little bit longer, but it also makes it safer. Because also in terms of the number of treatments, so before everybody received a, uh, a total of six to seven weeks of radiation, anywhere between 30 and 35 treatments, it was pretty standard, and uh, this is uh, a thing of the past. Uh, nowadays, we have a lot more options. Uh, most uh, patients with breast cancer will get less than the previous six weeks, <clears throat> although in some, some situations, we still use that old regimen. But basically, now it's anywhere between one and 30 treatments depending on the specific type and extent of the breast cancer and the patient characteristics as well. Um, in terms of what it was that we treated, right? So when do we treat just the breast and when do we treat everything including all the nodal areas? Um, so before it was determined solely by the anatomic stage. So for stage one, typically we just treat the breast um, after a lumpectomy. Uh, for more advanced stages where nodes were in involved, if the lymph nodes are positive, we would include the, lymph, the nodal areas. And then for stage four, it would be more of a, um, uh, a treatment to just palliate symptoms. Now it's different. Now we look much more at the molecular characteristics of the cancer. And so in some aggressive stage one cancers, we may actually do more um, and treat not just the breast, but also the nodal areas. Uh, but then um, for some higher stage, which uh, molecularly don't look to be so aggressive, we may be just fine actually treating less. Um, and uh, in some cases, in some select cases, we can uh, get away with treating just part of the breast. Also, we now know that not all stage fours are created equal. There is uh, something called oligometastatic disease, where um, the breast cancer has traveled to other parts of the body, but it's only in a couple of spots. And there we can um, use high-dose precise radiation very effectively to go after these spots. Um, and really provide a long-term control for the So this is an example of partial breast radiation where we would treat only around the lumpectomy cavity, and there are some select cases in which we can do that in a small number of fractions. And then in some cases where it's a tumor that is not surgically resectable, we can use uh, what's known as SBRT, or stereotactic body radiation therapy, which is uh, a very high-dose of radiation that's delivered in a, a very precise manner uh, to the tumor, um, but really sparing um, all the other tissues around it. And we can blast these, uh, uh, these refractory tumors with this high-dose radiation uh, quite effectively. We can also use a proton beam, 
which is available in some facilities around the country, is another way of shaping the beam uh, to make it a lot more conformal and uh, uh, spare all the, all the good tissues that we need to spare. And then um, there are, of course, the different combinations with systemic therapy. So there's, you know, over the past um, uh, 10 or 15 years, there's been a really a revolution in terms of systemic agencies, uh, uh, systemic agents both in terms of chemo and immunotherapy and targeted therapies. And one of the um, hottest areas of research in our field right now is the interplay between radiation and all these different systemic therapies. And there's a lot more to be said for that. Um, and um, hopefully we'll have a lot more um, new and exciting things on the horizon soon. But um, this is my talk. And um, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email. Uh, you have the email right here. And um, I look forward to it and look forward to seeing you in the future.